Oh yeah. Do any higher. My favorite. That air Hadouken is a lot different from Street Fighter V, I'll tell you that. Now I think about it, Akuma's got the same close medium kick. Guess he has it in Street Fighter IV as well. That little knee to the side. Looks better in this game, it's a nice angle. It looks like he's kind of drilling it into your, into your kidney in this game. In Street Fighter V, he's just kind of putting it out there. Ooh, that's nice. Low parry was um, a very ordinary thing to do there. Before Chun-Li has super, most uh, parries are low risk high reward. She does have a high only super confirm in back fear Sadoken, Kikoken. And she also has a low only super confirm in um, low parry only. In um, low forward. That's cool. First and last hit on Chun-Li, so that guarantees the time for a taunt. That was a good time to pull out a super. He definitely should have supered there. The Kikoken gives you a lot of cancel window. This is actually outro footage and not East versus West footage, so this is a different arcade. Whew. That towards Strong is less risky than it looks because it's uh, throw invincible for the whole duration, including after both hits. So you can actually parry both hits. Oh, yes! Oh, that was cool! So what you can normally do there... Nice uh, block punish. To me. What you can normally do there is you can do air Tatsu one hit, or two hits, it doesn't matter, into ground light Tatsu, and then you can juggle like a hard Tatsu or a heavy DP or something like that. But one thing you can actually do on some characters, I don't know if it works on everyone, is air Tatsu into the first and last hit of hard Tatsu. And then after that you can do like, oh, the TC. <laughs> Yo, that was actually lit. Hold on, let me see that again. You can do first and last hit and then that gives you a jump juggle. Like dash and jump instant Tatsu and stuff. That universal over, the, the anti-air jab short TC spaced Akuma perfectly, the, the universal overhead linked to super. That was so cool. You never see that TC from Remy. It's not, it's hard to find a good place for it. Let's put it like that. Remy, it doesn't like give him really combos at all, because his it's a standing TC and he needs to charge, and his ender would be flash kick. Technically speaking, you can do jab short into flash kick, but it requires partitioning. So it's not fun to do. It's nice as an anti-air after an OS parry to make the opponent have to parry twice rather than once. It seems like it would be no harder to do two parries rather than one, but it's a mix-up. Because if you're looking for two parries, and there's only one thing to parry, then you lose your parry into punish. But if you try and do one parry into punish, and the opponent does a two-hit thing, then you know, your punish gets hit by the second hit. So it's like a, it turns uh, it turns into a 50-50. Hard Tatsu Ender does, it has worse Oki than some of his other Enders, I guess. But it gives you time to get a taunt off. Akuma's taunt is just Ken's. It raises the damage of his next throw or combo. Falke looking pretty good. A lot of people are saying her animations look stiff and that she looks like an MK character. Maybe. Maybe. Um, getting on the ground and aiming that gun. I was getting kind of hyped for that. Remind me of Chris. That was like a Mortal Kombat character, dude. Straight up getting on the ground and shooting a low projectile. That's like Melina's low Psy. I swear there's other, there's like MK, there's an NRS character. There's at least one NRS character who does that. She had some gameplay appearance, or like the air gun. It looked less like, um... It looked less like, um, Akuma's air fireball. And more like, a uh... uh Maybe a uh, Tremors Air Low. Does that shot have a move where he actually gets on the ground? I don't feel like he does. Now. 
I've always thought the Sakura's stay medium punch looks a little jank visually. Most of Sakura's other animations look alright. He definitely squats for like an EX rifle. Maybe he takes a knee or something. I feel like there's at least one Blanca move that looks really strange to my eyes. Nice. You know what's funny is I think that high fireball would actually whiff. Ooh. But the the super force is stand. That fireball doesn't add any damage or anything. He only throws it to help with the confirm. Towards medium kick looks good. Crutch face looks good. Stand face looks a little funny. Back face looks alright. Stand strong looks a little funny. Low strong looks a little funny. Low forward, I don't like the angle of low forward. Sucker's low forward angle looks really strange. All our special moves look good. Serenos looks nice. Lyranos looks nice. All our lights look pretty good. Ooh. <laughs> Jump hard kick might have been good there. Uh, Hoes parry into stand jab. The I want to have my anti air work, anti air. The I have no regard to reward anti air. This is hard for Ken. That was definitely very easy to do. Stand short. The only thing I think that looks really off about stand short is um, uh, the speed at which it comes out and recovers. Because it looks like a pretty big full body move. So she's swinging her leg out sideways at you. But it's like, you know, four frame. And it recovers really fast too. But that's like most light normals. That was nice. Whoa. That was a hard read right there. <laughs> what is this? Normally that stay medium kick. That was actually, that was a nice little setup. This was very strange. The stay jab short TC into dash forward. And then he does stay medium kick. That would actually be a really good cross under. But unfortunately, like stay medium kick, it's... The nice thing about it is that it links a super, so you can use it as a super confirm for either super 1 or super 2. But he didn't have the super, so that really cool setup just kind of like, you know, wasn't as good. Not very rewarding in that context. Don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I was going to say low strong. Low fierce might be too slow in that context. Low strong flash kick. Coming for the EX. EX is very negligible. Damage increase over heavy, I think. EX is invincible though. I think all the flash kicks are throwing me in. But EX is definitely um, hit immune too. I mean, he's like a more traditional Street Fighter character. It's hard to explain. He's more like SF2 and less like SF3. Like, he doesn't really fit with a lot of the other characters the way his attacks work. His TCs are very non traditional. But his special moves. That flash kick. That was nice. Those kinds of confirms are neat. Any button into a sonic boom is technically a super confirm. By the sonic boom, you can react to whether the button hit. So if you just do like low strong into low boom, you can reaction super. If it hit. Remy's normals are okay, but they're really like combo unfriendly. But that's like this game in a nutshell. But like even more so for Remy. So the thing is, like low strong would be a pretty good normal on other characters. But on Remy, um, like after a parry, you can't really do low strong into like Ender, because after a parry, you're probably not gonna have a flash kick and you're probably not gonna have a sonic boom, and the only other Ender is super. So parry into super, parry into low strong into super is fine. But like the range and the cancelability of low strong aren't amazing. Like, apart from that. And his only cancel from it, besides Light of Virtue, which isn't very strong, is Flash Kick, which is not safe. 
He's got chaining jabs, which is not very common in this game. There's only a few. There's twin Shotos and Remy. Are like the only characters with chaining. I think uh, Hugo has chaining jabs. Oh, not very risky. Against a Chun Li with no super, it's not very risky at all to do unsafe things. It's okay to be a little wild against Chun Li without super. It's very important against Chun Li that you win the first round, because the second and third round are going to be a lot harder. Chun Li always starts with no meter. Uh, Yurian might. Yeah, Yurian has chain jabs, I think. He doesn't really have a thing to go for after them. He's got like a little punch TC that he can do. The jab's strong, but no one ever does it. Its main use is landing EX Tackle, which is not a thing that's even particularly rewarding to land. Although I think he can link a Tyrant Slaughter after EX Tackle. I'm pretty sure that works. Yurian has some really cool combos with uh, Super 1, but um, no one runs Super 1, so you don't really see them. Yurian actually has like a lot of like very deliberate design decisions to allow like all of his supers. He's actually got a decent little selection of supers, but um, Aegis is so good you'd never pick the other two. I don't know who any of these players are. This Ken's playing pretty good. He's not doing anything super amazing. He's just being really consistent and playing like top tier style. I bet with Sun Crouch. And, um. I don't know. I don't think I've ever, ever seen anyone do. Like. A light normal into a headbutt ever in all the time I've ever played this game. And I've played a lot of Yurians. It's not really a thing people do. I don't think you can go into EX headbutt from lights either. EX headbutt's actually rewarding to land since it, uh, launches. I'd rather just do Crutch Light Kick into Light Tackle, and then Super 3 from there. Oof. He might have been holding forward there. If you try and hold forward to walk out of the corner, you can block it like a cross-up, but then stay in the corner. And then the following combo will hit you on the front, and you'll probably be blocking the wrong way. It's an odd little situation that happens in this game occasionally. If you think you have time to walk out of the corner, but you actually don't. This is probably not Deshikin, but I have no idea. Some ra random chem player. <laughs> oh, he hit a button. You can still cancel a move that's parried, and that can potentially interrupt the opponent. Ken Super 3 is invincible for like two frames. That's all you need. It's fast as hell, so you'll potentially interrupt whatever the whatever button the opponent does. It's also not that unsafe, which is kind of annoying for some characters. Aura stands strong is like five frames, and I've still missed that shit. As a punish. God forbid you're a Yurian player and you want to punish it with Crutch Fierce. I don't even know if that works at all, I think it does. Yurian's Crutch Fierce is really good, but... Ooh. I don't envy him, because my launcher is Oro is safe. And also comes out a lot faster. Arguably has better mid-screen combos too. That was a nice parry, that was a nice punish. After, he did the link, but you can actually just go low strong. You can do parry into low strong and then cancel into super. You don't need to link it. The parry is your confirm. But if you're really consistent with the link, the link is safer. Because you'll be able to spot whether you hit the midair or something. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, depending on what you parried. Not to mention that parry into low strong is not always a punish. Like if you parry like normal or something like that. This is the Secret Color Yang, I think. Secret Color Yang has uh, pink Mantis Slashes. It looks kind of cool. There we 
there they are. Oof, that hurts on any character. Oh, that red was good. One block into red parry is very strong against Yang. Because for Yang, like, um, Manta Slash is very safe and very annoying. And the thing about parrying Manta Slash is that uh, Yang can start with staying strong into Manta Slash, which is high only parry. Uh, high parry only. Or he can start with low forward into Manta Slash, which is low parry only. So he's got like a 50-50 on you if you're trying to parry. But if you block once, you can block both of those low. Um, and if you block once and then shift over to high parry, oh, um, the high parry will, you know, parry the Mantis. So if you're consistent with that timing. The problem is Yang can actually do several different Mantis slashes, and that red parry timing will be different. And if you stop blocking in a true block string in this game, you start getting hit. Because otherwise, red parries would be completely well at risk. Fortunately, Yang's damage is not very high, so you can attempt it a lot. Yang doesn't punish you very hard for going for super risky parries. But also, he forces you to go for super risky parries. So, he's like a pretty good character design. That might trade. Okay, just one. That super's pretty fast, but I didn't think it would actually come out in time. <laughs> that was a good punish. Yeah, I knew it was coming. That was a very difficult situation for Ken because it could be grab, it could be low short to electricity, or it could just be electricity. And that's three different things that Ken has to do depending on which one it was. You can just parry one hit of electricity and then throw, I think. Don't think you need to keep parrying it forever or anything. I don't actually know how long Necro can mash it out, but the time between hits is kind of long compared to like Chun-Li Lightning Legs. So you can like do one parry and then hit a button. Whereas with Chun-Li Lightning Legs, you need to do something very fucking fast. Pretty sure throw works for Chun-Li. Pretty sure you can throw between Lightning Leg hits, as long as you just got a parry. Parrying to throw is usually a true... Not, not a combo, but you know, it's usually a true sequence. Because throw comes out in three frames, and parries usually lock the opponent down for... It depends on what you parried, but usually at least four in addition to the natural recovery of the move. It's actually kind of neat how it all works. If you parry a super, the opponent just has the natural recovery of the super. If you parry a special move, they have the natural recovery of the special move plus two frames. So if like a Hadouken would naturally recover in like 19 frames after the hit, it's suddenly 21. If you parry a heavy, it's 4 frames plus the natural recovery. If you parry a medium, it's 6 frames plus the natural recovery. And if you parry a light, it's 8 frames plus the natural recovery. So the natural recovery of a jab might only be like 4 frames. But if you parry the parry the jab and then, you know, it suddenly gets to be like 12. Something like that. I think those are the correct numbers. It might be 642 and then I don't know. I think it goes up by twos and I think it does all of those things. Light medium heavy special and super. So if you parry a light normal you still usually get a punish. Yeah, Yang has a really hard time confirming his supers, and EX Slash is like his most rewarding thing, but it's still not very rewarding. It's better for its stun output than its damage output, although the damage output is alright. 3-8 EX Slashes will dizzy an opponent, I think. I think his special moves have very good design. He's got a place for like all of them. Except that one. Ooh. He does this little rolling kick thing here and there, usually after a close medium kick. He does, um, whoa. Nice. A lot of power on that. I actually want to see what that did to Yang's health. Let's take a quick little gander. 
All right, right here. Oh my god. That was about a 40% maybe of his HP in one sequence. Their Tatsu stuff is like the ex next break of this game. Technically speaking, Yang can do um, F80 Seed Slashes, which is normally, it normally uses the Super Cancel flag. But he can't cancel, say, Embu from Slash. Same with um, uh, Yun's Dash Punch. It's one of the only instances in the game where you can't cancel a move into um, Super, but you can FADC it. They have like custom flags for those two moves. They're specially coded to not allow Super Cancels. Yeah, Yang does have to be right a lot. Still quite a strong character. Good neutral, bad damage. He's like a better, better implementation of the 12 idea. Ooh, I didn't think that was in range. That might have been a car for the second one. I've been fucking around a lot in Game Maker lately. I've been thinking about making a beat em up with level ups and a skill tree. I've been thinking about like, oh, I think he could jump that. Uh, I've been thinking about like making games that I want to play, you know what I mean? But my uh, abilities are very limited, so I've got to make really retro shit. The kind of shit anyone can make. I want to make my own LF2. I've already got two other projects I'm working on, though. Oh, nice confirm. <laughs> that was a daring DP. If Necro didn't have a button, he would just whiffed. Although he wouldn't have been that unsafe. He should have supered! No, wait, no, he was down around. He should not have supered. You could juggle an AT or DP into a super, but it only gets like one or two hits of the super. But that's all he needed there. You can just juggle a DP into a super always, I think. Ken can just do light DP on a grunted opponent and then juggle super. Nice. Oh, never mind. Not nice. Necro can do back medium kick or close strong, or back strong rather, there. And it looks like it truly does not matter which one he goes for. They seem to do like the same damage and they seem to do like the same, they seem to have the same range and the same startup. They're like almost the same normal. What up, Joe? See how that stand run wasn't a punish after that stand strong on parry? Visually, Shippu is one of my favorite supers in this game, so I don't mind that literally every Ken picks it. I actually like it a lot. A very low damage, very combo friendly super. Shippu is like my ideal super in a Street Fighter game. Frequently available, like not very rewarding, skillful ways of landing it. The ex Rekka is a little bit harder to interrupt between hits. A lot of people go for two parries rather than one. Like, if they see it's an EX record, they just go for another parry. Dizzy. Sometimes Yangs do stand fierce into Rekkas. Sometimes they do stand strong into Rekkas. Stand fierce is two hits, and the first hit by itself is not as strong as, you know, both hits. I wonder if just stand strong by itself and its one hit is stronger than stand fierce and its two hits. Or, and its first hit. That was a weird red. And he actually got the, he baited out the full EX Rekka. That was definitely unsafe, but he didn't punish it. It doesn't do that good damage. It's one of the weaker supers in this game. Remember in this game, like Oro has like a fucking 70% damage super. And it's not even full length. Gigas Breaker is like 60%. It does complement Ken's Godoki, but more offensively. More the fact that it combos from overhead than that it gives him a hard knockdown. Hard knockdown is a feature of like every super. 
Ooh. In terms of like supers, it's on the low end. Oh, don't get me wrong, Shifu is one of the best supers in the whole game. I call it top five. <laughs> wow, he just did it. Wake up low short into flash kick. No confirm. I think that's hard on twins. That was a Kara grab. That was a neutral grab. That's very hard to do. The car grab is off towards medium kick, and in order to do the neutral grab, you have to not be holding forward. So what you have to do is towards medium kick, and then one frame later, you have to release forward and throw. And timing that forward release sounds like it would be pretty easy, if just the same timing as the throw, but it's really not. Top five supers. Um, Chun-Li super is pretty good even in a vacuum, but it... Especially, it's especially good with her, like, car grab and just low forward. Um, I like this list, and then throw on, um, Aegis. I'd probably say Aegis, Genagin, Abare, Shipu, Hoyoksen. i put them in that order. i put Aegis as number one. I don't know. I think Oro's got one and maybe two supers that are better than Hoyoksen, now that I think about it. Abara is Abara Tosanami, which is Makoto Super 2. Um, maybe Tengu Stones over Hoyoksen. Or maybe actually uh, Aura Super 2, Yagyodama. Yagyodama, if you, depending on, Yagyodama could be the best super in the whole game. It could be number one. It's pretty bonkers. It gives him a lot of meter. It doesn't take a lot of meter to do. It's got an unblockable, uh, an unblockable loop that's basically an infinite. A tech air throw! How often do you see that? <laughs> Yang doesn't even have an air throw. That's the best part. She tried to throw him. Time out. Let's watch that again. Look at it. Chun Li jumped and did an air throw, and Yang teched the air throw. Taking an air throw is just light punch plus light kick, and you can do it even if you don't have an air throw. But most people who don't have an air throw would never think to do that. It's kind of cool because it's a little OS if you don't have an air throw. Um, because air lights are really fast and have a good chance of interrupting whatever your opponent's doing in an air to air situation, and you get like jump jab I think if you do a tech air throw. Well, the thing is, yeah, it's like, if they do, like, an air medium kick or an air heavy or something, you get a jump jab and you interrupt them. And if they do an air throw, then you tech the air throw. So it's like an OS. Yeah, you can tech air throws in this game. You can't tech air throws in Street Fighter 4 or 5. Kind of a mechanics downgrade. There's three. There's Ibuki, there's Chun-Li, and there's Aura. Air throw actually has a purpose in this game. It's to catch people who are doing air parry. If someone air to airs, if you're in an air to air situation and they're going for an air parry, then it's a little mix up where you know you don't know whether they're going to hit a button, you've got to interrupt it, or if you if you hit a button, they, they would parry you and then they'd be able to go for a guaranteed successful jump hard kick or whatever. Um, but if they're going for an air parry, you can just air throw them. And depending on your timing, it'll beat whatever air normal they do, and it will also beat their air parry. In 4 and 5, air throws are just fast. In this game, they're not very fast. In this game, air throws are like 5 or 6 frames or something. It depends on the character, I think. Ours is very slow. It's the slowest one. Um, but in Street Fighter 4 and 5, air throw is like a 3 frames, I think. It might be 5 in Street Fighter 5, if they slowed it down. I don't know if they did. But most air normals are pretty slow. 
Like, jump hard kick is often like an 8 or 9 frame normal for a lot of characters. So, going for an air throw is a really good option. And even jump lights are usually like 5. They don't try and make jump lights super fast or anything. So, um, and also air throws do pretty good damage in air to air situations. If you do a jump hard kick in an air to air, that's like 90. If you do an air throw in an air to air situation, it's like uh, 100, 130, something like that. So they're really fast, and they're um, so they've got a good chance of winning in air to air situations, and they also do high damage. So that's why I use them in four and five. They can help with positioning too. If you're Guile, for example, and you can throw the opponent whichever way you want to. In Street Fighter V especially, the knockdown state is very nice. If you get an air throw in Street Fighter... Uh, if you get an air throw in... If, you get an, like a, if you're on the way up and you do an air throw, you land after they do in Street Fighter V. If you do an air normal. But if you do an air throw, you'll probably land before they do. Or you'll probably recover before they do. So you're not in a horrible like guessing situation. Ah, <laughs> it's two and then it's a big window and then it's like four more. I don't actually remember. I wouldn't feel very confident trying to go for that parry. It's also a red parry. There's no like, it's a true block string all the way through. There's no place to start bloom parrying in the middle, unlike say Dudley. Ken's is also a uh, true block string all the way through. His, uh, what do you call it? His DP super, the first one. Show you Reppa. Dudley's is blue. Dudley's is three different block strings, so you can block the first two hits and then shift over to parries, which is very easy. Maybe he's a little sigh when he crouches for a little while. Suddenly missed a car throw. Or maybe he didn't go for one because that was pretty close. Maybe he's tiny micro walk backward. Saved him though. Ouch, bad way to start. Uh, Chun-Li can super through fireballs, which makes this matchup really annoying. Cold Blue Kick has a nice little situation in air to airs. It's normally quite unsafe on block, but obviously in air days you can't block it. Um, and then also the timing in which it hits. Ooh, good for Remy. Um, the timing in which it hits is kind of unpredictable. Because he kind of jumps up and then arcs down. So uh, even if you are even if you see it come out, you know, you've got a good chance of missing it. Nice. Make her land on a low. True third strike anti-air. That might have been a punish on her air normal. Your steam in this game is so cool. It's not the worst. No, it might be the worst groove, yeah. No, um, S groove is the worst groove, isn't it? I think. Close fierce anti air. Very cool. People really prefer not to use close anti airs without a parry in this game. After a parry, they're pretty reliable, but before a parry, they're not. I think this is just arcade footage and not a tournament. I don't know, it says one on one. It might just be casuals. People staying on until they're knocked off. P group gives you a little bit more freedom um, about when you use the uh, super. But uh, just defend is, even though parry gives you more time, look at that. Um, even if, even if, even if just a fencer, he tried, he got hit on the jump out. Even if just a fencer, even if parries are more rewarding after you get one, just a fencer is so much lower risk to go for. That's what makes K move a lot better.
Parrying to close medium kick, quite good for twins. It's a little slow though. And you won't always get close medium kick. Oh, look at that. Tons of Dizzy on that. Oh, he's dead. Taunt, jumps, Renos, Fierce. Yep. All that. That was very immaculately played. You don't see that call out very often. I know you're going for anti -air EX flash kick. So here's my. Uh, whoa, wait, timeout. You guys see that? That was subtle, but that was skillful. Remy's charging here, right? Right here. He's charging here. Parry. Close medium kick. Dash in. Close medium kick. Fireball. <laughs> what was that? That was cool. That was some nice partitioning. It's hard to even spot where the charging was going on. He had that had two breaks. Skillful. Touch positioning is so cool, and I can't believe it never came back. Oh, that dizzy though. You have some neat little juggles on Q. He's a fat fuck. Q is the widest character in the game when falling. Which makes it so you can do some really neat stuff on him. Ooh. Yang, this is a funny matchup because uh, Yang has a giant fatigue uh, advantage. But if Hugo lands a super, I mean Hugo, if Q lands a super two, Yang instantly dies. The round just ends. It's also very fast, so you can use it to punish Rekkas. That only works on women plus Q, I think. He'd like to win without using a super, but... Ooh, that's good. <laughs> okay, there it is. Even a raw super 2 into an ender does like 60 or 70% of Yang's health. And raw super 2 is not too hard to land as like an AT or something like that after a parry. Or as a punish from like a Rekka. It's not very impractical at all. Ooh, the call out. A super has some invincibility. That might have been a punish. Jump short, I think. Yeah, it was. This is still. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say this is still a match he can win. Yeah, he didn't really have time for that. Ooh. Suddenly you have big combos here. Stain Fierce Ender does more stun, but you can actually do another two Rekkas, which does more damage. It's, I think, Heavy Rekka, Light Rekka. Heavy Rekka, Light Rekka, and then if you want to do an Ender, it's Heavy Rekka. It might just be two Heavy Rekkas, but you can also end with Stain Fierce. That combo also works after a close medium kick, but close medium kick sets up a juggle state of three, whereas Paul meant sets up a juggle state of one. So you get uh, a much shorter combo after a stay medium kick. Auto is an arcade. That combo actually works on a lot of characters. I think. But it's easy on Chun-Li. She probably timed her parry with the first Rekka and then didn't hit her. Unfortunate. And then she was in parry lock for the second one. Yang gets a really nice 50-50 after every um, command grab. He gets medium kick into jump hard kick, and then the landing. He can either do another command grab, which Chun-Li can't interrupt, or he can do a low. 
which has mutually exclusive escapes from the command grab. Command grab versus low is very strong in this game. Maybe a buff. Oof. Got her? Yeah, it did. Yangtze for two isn't very good. He has very few confirms into it, is the thing. It's also not super damaging for how hard it is to land. It also loses damage if you get an anti-air version of it. Not a whole lot of damage. It's not a big deal. The main reason people Yangs pick that super is because uh gives you a lot of bar. None of Yang supers are that good. Say Embu is the best one by far. Uh but having EX is really nice, so a lot of Yangs pick this even though Say Embu is better. I would say Super 2 is perhaps Yang's best super. But it depends on the matchup a little bit. Say Ambu helps a lot against certain characters. The only time Yang can really truly land a uh, Super 2 in a good way is after it is he. It's like all the EX meter. Fucks that play. You get like five EXs out of that super meter. That shit matters a lot. Yang's EX is really good. Maybe the best in the game. Well, EX roll isn't very good. Palm has no EX version. Command grab has no EX version. Teleport has no EX version. So Yang only has one EX move of note, but it's like the best EX move. The EX Rekka. Fun fact, you can actually do stay medium kick into a very well-timed roll into a super, and that does a lot of damage. I don't think it's character specific, but it might be. But it's very hard to time. Basically, if you get the version of the roll where you can link a jab, or juggle a jab, then you could also do a super there. Often yes, failed parries. A lot of the times, um, all of these Yang, all of Yang's uh, slashes are minus on block, so you can like get some some counter pressure going after you block one. But there's always a possibility that he'll go for another slash and interrupt whatever button you hit. Uh, if Yang gets three wins in a row or more, uh, a cat appears whenever he wins. He's the only character with anything like that. It's just a little quirk. That whiff dive kick into another dive kick. Oh, okay, Miss Dizzy, though. There it goes. I think you can actually still do Rekkas after... Um, Round ends. Normally there's a flag that makes it so in the post KO you can't do any special moves. But I think if Yang uh, just did a first Rekka, he can do a second Rekka and a third Rekka during the end screen. During the post KO. Ooh. It was a fake from a cross up dive kick which would have hit much deeper. He was trying to catch uh, Akuma blocking the other way since a heavy dive kick would have crossed up. They had a very good success rate, I feel. In addition to punishing like a grab or something else like that. Since the first dive kick looked like a grab setup. It wasn't super rewarding, but it had a very high success rate and it was safe if it was hit. Whew, that's neutral jump. A little risky. He was definitely parrying during it, but he put himself in a kind of bad situation. This is very hard to live through. Oh, he actually could have taken it. He actually blocked it. <laughs> wow. I thought it was over. He high blocked too. That's a nice little thing. 
If you low block, you take a little bit more chip than if you high block. Fun fact. You actually just take more damage in general if you're crouching in this game. You're also in hit stun for longer. Smart. He got more meter build for dropping his combo. If he just hit the Rekka, it wouldn't have gotten as much meters ending his Rekkas and then going for another. Oh, that was nice. EX Rekka would have been so good there. Oh, it's over. GG. Yang is good. This matchup is fine. It's not too bad, but it can end really fast. But that's like a Kuma in general. Kuma's matchups are good on paper, but even against low tiers, he can just get flattened if he makes a mistake. Or not even if he makes a mistake, if he guesses wrong. If Q gets like one good parry on Akuma, he can do like 80%. But like if you actually watch Akuma versus Q, it's, it's a pretty shitty matchup. It's like 7-3. Oh, that might work. Yeah, hit him midair. You can't parry the first hit of that. That was actually guaranteed. And the Kuma's invincible until after it like ends. Look at that, dude. Anti-air KKZ. KKZ is slow as shit. So you have to do it so early in the opponent's jump. It's also got a long motion. It's down, down, down punches or whatever. Looks like it hit him midair. I could Yang might have been able to dive kick and then land in time. Like, what if he did light dive kick there? I don't know, because dive kick pauses midair too. I think he was just hit by that KKZ. I don't think that was a thing to do. That was a really nice KKZ. He buffered it so quick. It's really hard to do that super fast. Like it's hard to do Demon Arm Armageddon fast, and that's two ups. KKZ is three downs. And that's two neutrals. Like, the bare minimum speed you can do that super is like 5 frames. And most people are not going to do it anywhere near that fast. Good screen position on that one. He was just trying to coward capture out of the corner. Again? Didn't work that time. It's actually kind of hard to punish that Demon Armor or KKZ. It's very minus, but it has a lot of pushback. So Akuma's got whatever super he picks. Super 1, 2, or 3. And then he's also always got... They're all the same length. And then he's always got uh, Raging Demon, which costs 2 full bars. And he's always got KKZ, which also costs 2 full bars. And all the supers, because all the supers are the same length, there's no way you can get a cheaper KKZ or a, cheap, a cheaper Demon. They're all two bars and they're all identical bar length. And then he's got no EX. But his specials are so good that they might as well all be EX, to be honest. His regular air Tatsu was like Ken's EX air Tatsu. His regular DP has invincibility. He's got a multi-hit fireball in his red fireball. It's quite strong, quite a strong character. Very nice. KKZ is basically it's like a punish super, I guess. It's hard to find a place for it. It's deliberately a very, very, very hard super to use. He was buffering it there, looking for a jump. Good, he got it. It does an ass ton of damage. It's very powerful. If Yang hits like that and misses the last hit, he has no recovery when he lands. Kind of fun. 
Um, it's a true anti-air because the first hit's unparryable. It also does a shit ton of chip. It also has a shit ton of invincibility. So if you can get an anti-air connect with it, or if you can get a chip out with it, it's quite a good super. But it's very slow. It's a very slow super. It's like 30 frame startup or something. Car throw. Oof. I don't think I need to explain Raging Demon to anyone, but it works pretty much the same way in this game as it does in others. It's one frame startup, and um, if he's point blank when he activates it, it's a true throw. Well, it's always a true throw, but it's a true, you know, you can't jump out. Yeah, if you do a light Tatsu into jab into a very perfectly timed KKZ, it will hit the opponent right before they land. And it's unparryable. Like, the opponent can parry there, but the first it's unparryable, so it's unparryable. That setup is unparryable. Normally the opponent can parry resets the super. Whoa, that setup was kind of cool. The whiff taught to, to kind of stay close. This matchup is explosive. Both characters have kind of low health and good output damage. The cancel into red firewall, that was probably a punish. Teleport into the corner. Autocrack still exists in this game, but it's not as common. It's harder to do on purpose or on accident. So that could have been an autocorrect teleport. The buffer to the super. Yang's new to jump in trying to catch the the whiffed super. Oh, the big damage on this. Yeah, he got the full conversion. The demon! That was well buffered. Oh my god, that just killed Yang. That's a pretty strong super, but that wouldn't have killed most characters. Yang is just frail. Oh. The video ended. Alright, I've got this one right here. Let me change the resolution a little bit. Who's this? Makoto? I haven't seen Makoto in a minute. This costume. Makoto went from being one of my least favorite characters in this game to one of my favorite characters in this game. Between like Super and and Ultra. <laughs> Wake up delayed Stan Fierce. He was teching the throw with Stan Fierce. I think Stan Fierce has some throw invincibility. Medium Kick does too. Oh, should I turn it down? It's probably a lot of shit. Doesn't look like it's like that loud. Makoto was probably the worst character in Super. It might have been Hakan. Makoto in Super might have been the weakest character in all versions of this game. Fun fact. Like, if you were to look across all five versions for the character who was the lowest tier, Super Makoto was a good candidate. She was very defective. No, DJ DJ has never been truly weak. He's usually like low tier in the balanced versions of the game. And his tier has never really shifted. Like Ultra DJ isn't significantly stronger or weaker than previous versions of DJ. He's been about the same like every single version. DJ at least has an anti-air. Super Makoto didn't have an anti-air. Fukiyage I think didn't have the upper body invincibility back in Super.
And uh, Stand Strong wasn't really good in Super. And Lobinium Kick had no upper body invincibility in Super. Makoto like, literally could not ATA in Super. Forward throw is less rewarding than all other throws without being better in any way. Um, her command grab into Super 1 or Ultra 1 was kind of good, I guess. But that was like her only setup into Ultra 1 without. Um, uh, that was her only setup into Ultra 1 without. Uh, uh, without Super. She had to do like Dash Punch into Super into Ultra. And that's like a lot of bar. And then f I think uh, I think Ultra Two didn't have the Fireball invincibility until a, or I think it did, but it was really hard to use. The thing is, she wasn't invincible until she hit the. She wasn't invincible to Fireballs on the way to the wall, so you could do it on reaction to a, a Fireball and then get hit before you even hit the wall. Super was when they added the second Ultra. Vanilla Rose had some nice and terrible features. She wasn't even the lowest, char lowest tier character in Vanilla. It's probably Dan. It was probably Dan or Claw. We're both worse than Rose and Vanilla. Vanilla Claw is very, very shit. He's another candidate for worst character in the lifespan of the game. That was probably safe. It was a very, very late connect EX drill. EX drill is probably the second easiest drill to make safe in this game. It's like light, then EX, then heavy, then I mean medium, then heavy. That overhead. I forget what that is on block. Probably zero. Where's your crush counter punish, Jerry? Using regular ass punish combos to punish DPs in this game. I actually like a first suit from Makoto. Put Makoto in the cat costume from uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Or just give her a fucking squirrel costume from Ultra. What is this Forte? Looks like Skillow. Ooh, cross up jump fierce. Cross up neutral jump fierce. Most neutral jump normals cannot cross up in this game. Because this game has a lot of uh, air normals that change on neutral jump. Whereas Street Fighter 5 doesn't. Like if Ryu has a cross up medium kick for example. But if he neutral jumps he gets a different medium kick which doesn't cross up. Very few neutral jump attacks will cross up. Jury and Chun-Li have a jump, neutral jump hard kick that hits on both sides. I think there's another character with a similar hard kick. I can't remember ever seeing the Fuerte in this costume, or at least not in this color. But I wouldn't be surprised if I've seen it before. Nice little struggle there. anti -air level 2 focus uh, knocks the opponent down pretty quickly. And it's a JP... Uh, no, it's JP0, so you can juggle anything. Was that an anti -air level 1 focus, actually? anti -air level 1 focus is JP1, but it knocks the opponent down very slowly, so you have a lot of time to juggle out of it. He had a juggle there. Just like light pinwheel. Tortilla. Just case it a bomb. 
A Forte's light normal combos are very, very awkward. This is a game where light normal combos are pretty much make or break for your tier. Light normals are really, really good in this engine. It is Skullo, dude. Look at all that white! Oh, there it goes. That was a 300 damage Blanca Ball. I think El Forte actually has some kind of bad options to hit Blanca while he's charging. Or not charging, electricity. In vanilla, at least, uh, he had a hard time hitting Blanca out of electricity at all, if memory serves. So did Abel. So did Vega. Like, all of their buttons to hit Blanca like they got hit in the startup by the electricity. That was a cross-up ball. I'm not sure I've ever tried to go for a cross-up ball in Street Fighter V. It probably doesn't work. It'd be kind of cool if we had that. I never minded that. Empty jump, medium kick. That's actually really dirty. What almost everyone does for cross-ups that can't be, or er, jump attacks that can't be anti-aired. That was, uh, EX run has three hits of armor. Um, what almost everyone does for an, a jump attack that can't be anti-aired is they, like, block it, and then they go for an OS throw. And that blocks the air attack and then texts the throw. So if a character like Blanca does empty jump into medium kick, that's throw immune almost immediately. So if they block and then tech a throw then that medium kick will hit them during their throw attack. And then Blanca can link out of it. So that's like a mix-up. It's like a 50-50. But it's like better than a 50-50 because the chances of someone going for a throw there are very high. It's a, it's a mix-up where people don't realize, probably won't realize that it's a mix-up. So they probably won't try and defend themselves like randomly. That was another empty jump medium kick. Blanca has a very hard time landing his uh, Ultra 2, unfortunately. And he has an even harder time landing his Ultra 1. It's one of his biggest weaknesses as a character. That's his only Ultra 2 setup of note. Up ball into red focus. Costs 3 bars for a regular up ball. Costs 4 bars for an EX up ball. So it's very expensive. It's also very hard to confirm. Red focus gives you a anti-air Ultra 2. Which is actually very, very powerful. It's one of the stronger Ultras in the game. So, um, he's not bad anyway. Well, he is bad, but, you know, that's that's all right. Poison probably shouldn't have a cancelable state medium kick. There, I said it. Poison's a pretty strong character in general. Pretty much everyone saw her in Ultra when they added the five characters, and they're like, this character's probably going to be a high tier. But there haven't been that many Poison players in the whole lifespan of the game. Everyone kind of agrees that she's good, but they're like, no one's playing her. That was guaranteed chip out. That was all tree block string. And if Blanca did wake up EX up ball or something like that, Poison could have just it would have whiffed because it was a meaty fireball on his wake up. Poison could have Poison wouldn't have been inside him. If you know what I mean. Love that juggle. Counter hit, got the link, but then missed the he went for he went for crouch stabbing to close fierce. That's tight. Or no, does that work at all? I think it's stand jab into crush fierce. He went, he went for some whack shit. Poison had good costumes all the way through. The best one was the Peacock, in my opinion. Poison's like a little popular among beginners, but not among pros. There were a decent number of internet randoms playing Poison. I don't think she was ever that popular. None of the DLC, none of the Ultra characters were ever that popular. Relanta didn't have that many players. DiCapri had almost none. Um, Elena had almost none. Hugo had not that many. Poison had some. Um, Elena was probably top two in the game. I am nearly certain of that. Elena was actually unrealized. Like, Elena was better than people gave it credit for. 
Evil Ryu is questionably better than Elena, but less than you would think. Evil Ryu was added in A. So was Oni. So were twins. I don't even remember Funko's DiCapri. I remember Deuce pretty clearly. I remember Infiltrations. Those were the two I remember. Evil Ryu got massive buffs in AE 2012 and then massive buffs in Ultra. But to be 100% honest, even in AE, Evil Ryu was probably about as good as Ryu. He just required a lot more effort. He already had like really high damage from Fireball FADC. He already had the same crouch medium kick. People just regarded it as bad back then. It took a really long time for people to realize that just because Evil Ryu's crouch medium kick was different from Ryu's didn't make it worse. Oof. I think uh, light dash punch is minus three. The Buki stage over three frames. Got to be a little careful about that. The Buki stage jab goes really far for a three frame normal. Street Fighter Five has a more balanced version of it. Nice. It's still winnable. He might need a miracle um, headbutt real soon. Falk's uh, super is the best super in the whole game. I don't care what anyone says. It looks ridiculous. She bonks you on the head. Falk's and medium punch is still really good. It's like as good as Crutch Fierce was. In this game, maybe a little bit worse. But it goes out farther while still being as good against like close anti air stuff. It's not as strong as Crutch Fierce, though, in this game. Crutch Fierce in this game is like 90 or whatever. 100. It's quite strong. Remember PR Rog? Remember him fighting like Snake Eyes and it's like Geef versus Rog? And then there's a Lariat from Geef. And what fucking PR Rog does to punish it is Crouch Fierce cancel to Super. I remember seeing that shit and thinking, what the fuck did I just see? Crouch Fierce doesn't special cancel in this game, but it does cancel the Super. We don't even know that Falk is evil. We don't even know that Ed's evil. Ed's just kind of a meanie because Balrog's kind of a meanie. They're just selfish. Ed's just copying Balrog. Oh, is it confirmed? Never mind. Oh, what's confirmed? Ed's like made his own new organization. We don't know anything about it, do we? I don't think so. He fucking made like Neo Shadow or whatever, and it's not the same thing as the Illuminati, evidently. Do we know that Neo Shadow is against or with regular Shadow? Dude, we had like 50 USF4 Bath Cups.
Nice. I think I had one Omega Buff Cup. I think. I might have had zero. Ooh, low profile the uh, dash punch. EX uh, dash upper actually just whiffs on any crouching opponent. You don't even need low profile. Which makes it, it's like the safest dash punch follow up. Or arguably the most unsafe, considering it whiffs on crouch. Ouch. Bog doesn't dizzy people that often. Addition select is not very interesting because Ultra is not the most balanced version of a lot of characters. Not a lot, but like, you know. Omega plus Ultra is very interesting in my opinion. But when you add in like AE and Vanilla, it gets nasty. It stops being fun. Or like Super Kami. Even Vanilla Kami was kind of nasty, but Super Kami was even better. Vanilla Kami was like one of the most slept on characters. Kemi was like probably high tier in vanilla, but she was treated like she was low tier. We didn't find out that she was like super busted until way later. Like if we knew everything that we know now about Kemi in vanilla, she would have been like top 5 probably. Damn. Zero mega bath cups, one ultra double bath cup. We really didn't fuck around. We should have. I think that was back when Gen was a thing, and I was still talking about, like, what if Gen? I make Gen was stupid at release. This is a nice lame matchup. It's less bad than you would think, but it's it might be like a 6.5, 3.5. It's pretty bad. It's not fun for a T-Hawk. Rose has... Punishes on blocked dive. She's got like decent anti airs as they go, so she doesn't have to worry about the dive mix up very much. Her fireballs put T Hawk in a horrible place. Close medium kick fucks with him. Omega Gen actually has a really, really, really interesting tool set. MC jump medium kick, same thing as the Blanca one. Same idea. Ugh. That backdash. The thing about T-Hawk is that he cannot chase a backdash for shit. He's like the worst character in the game at chasing backdashes. Like literally bar none the worst. And Rose has the game's best backdash. Followed very closely by Chun-Li and Poison. Ooh. I think I had a how to swag with Omega again. Anyone remember that series? Remember how to swag? Those are actually the best videos I ever made. Let's marathon all the how to swag videos. Someone find me that playlist. You get her? Of course not. There's no downside to Rose backdashing there. Like, what could T Hawk possibly do to chase it? Sweep would get backdashed. The first hit would whiff, and the second hit would be blockable. Um, Daijobu. That's what that text says. Um, Instant Spire wouldn't chase her far enough, I don't think, unless it was EX and he had no bar. Um, DP would whiff. Like, SPD would whiff. All of his buttons would whiff, except maybe Hard Kick, which would probably whiff. Or if it didn't whiff, it would probably, like, hit her midair and leave her really far away. There was, like, nothing to do there. Alright, let's, let's watch some swag strats. 
Someone like took this all seriously, but I guess this was my first one, so they didn't get it. That's a <laughs> So for for uh they made special moves in this game that are like deliberate Kara moves. So that overhead is one of them. You can do that overhead and then cancel it to either a butt slam if they jump out or a command grab if they don't jump out. Um it's down forward hard kick for that that ground pound style move, this one. So um uh, you can't have back charge while you're doing it, but you do have down charge, and you can also cancel it to a command grab. Um, so it's an overhead, and also you can preemptively cancel it to a command grab or a button that a, a special move that chases down jumps. It's not a good mix-up. You don't really have ever find a time to use it, but it is there. I guess they planned for you to use it, but it really isn't very good. But he also has a TC that literally no one uses. That's two hits of stand strong into, or is it one hit of stand strong? Yeah, one hit of stand strong into that overhead. Anyway, it, you can also focus cancel those, but it counts as an FADC. So what I did here was a red focus cancel, which is completely the same as a regular focus in this context. And then I did dash in Ultra 2, which is not even a one-frame throw. It was 100% memes, but like this whole playlist is 100% memes, so it doesn't matter. This one's kind of funny. I went through the whole game, and this is the only... The, so the thing is, Hugo can cancel a... If he claps a fireball, he can can he can super cancel it. But uh, almost every fireball, if you clap it, then the super cancel won't be a punish. And also, the super just goes through fireballs anyway. But this was an example of a uh, ultra being dispelled by a single clap, and also the super cancel follow up being um, a punish on the ultra. So it was like the best example I could find. This one's cute. I think Desk did this one too. Ultra one. Juggled into Ultra 2. I used a full charge tap to give myself some Ultra Meter. You can see the time is super low because I spent a really long time charging the tap because I didn't remember how long you need to charge it to get a final. Took, uh, I think, two tries too. Oh, I, this was just like a really stupid looking combo. There's nothing fancy about this one. Kami's close medium kick is like four frames. It looks really, really dumb. Oh, the infinite. The genfinite. I've seen this work against real players in actual matches. And then I showed off that it's unsafe. That low medium, that low light kick is like minus seven or something. One, two, three, four. Four focus attacks. This one got featured on uh, Event Hubs for some reason. Even though I did like a tutorial right around this time that didn't get featured on Event Hub, some shitty four focus Elena combo got featured and had its own story. This is the Shin Genfinite. <laughs> God, that's one of my favorite combos I've ever like done in any video game. It's very stylish. Stay medium kick, st I mean, stay medium punch, stay medium punch. And then I style change. Uh, you can do um, style changes as a cancel in Omega, it costs one bar to do. So that's like what's happening there. So I'm doing stand strong cancelled into crane style, and that gives me a. Um, it makes me. I, it means I can link out of that stand strong. And then I did low strong there because it moves me forward. Then I did a one bar style cancel into uh, key style again. And then I did the TC that time. It's like four. This this combo literally. I start in crane. I land and then I do a mantis normal, crane normal, mantis normal. Crane normal, Mantis normals. So I have like five different, I have like five swaps in this combo, and then it leads to the infinite. Oh, this one's just game footage. This one's not even like. <laughs> Elena has some really stupid looking combos in Omega Edition. I was literally looking for a focus so I could go for a fancy combo. You can see me kind of scumming for it. Just looking around, being greedy. All in. One, EX move, two EX moves, three EX moves, four EX moves. <laughs> I had a link out of that towards strong too. Look at that combo. Very amusing. That level three focus though. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I remember this one. I hit a Dalsim jump jab, which goes very far down. You need a very early connect. So this combo, uh, counter hit uh, Stain Fierce launches, but you can't have the late connect Stain Fierce. It has to be the early connect. It has to be the first frame connect. And the opponent also needed to be really high up. And of course, if they're landing onto the Stain Fierce, it's going to be a late connect. So I needed the opponent to be simultaneously right next to me, like right in front of me, and really high in the air. And Dalsim jump jab was perfect for that because I hit the jump jab like uh, in its in, in my early frames, which causes him to knock over. And then I get a juggle to sweep into Ultra 2. It's a very stylish combo. A lot of damage too. That's a fancy one, 550. Oh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Tatsu hits back, like Tatsu has a front hit, like Tatsu has a front hit then a back hit. So this context, this him dashing under me gives me the Tatsu hitting from behind, which means it recovers effectively faster, which means I can juggle an Ultra 2. Light Tatsu, I mean, yeah, Light Tatsu always causes a free juggle state, but normally you don't have enough time to juggle an Ultra 2. That was a cool one. I don't remember this one. Oh, yeah. I remember this one. <laughs> the taunt. Smug. This one's cool. Same business. I needed him to I need to hit him on the ground, but I also need to hit him super high in the air. And then I show a juggled version of Ultra 2, which most people don't realize exists. It's just very, 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 very impractical. Because you need only one hit of the dust to hit. That's like basically the only way you can get it. Cody actually has some pretty cool stuff he can do with the knife. That's one of the cooler things he can do. Most people don't really know anything about the knife. Stand strong is two hits and the first hit cancels the super. And you can also confirm stand strong pretty easily. This is a cute little way of ending the round. In a very a juggle that most people don't know. The thing is that juggle does less damage than just letting the DP rock. This is me showing off just really stupid, like, really stupid juggles. Two red focuses into Ultra 2. Partial connect. How many double red focus combos do you know? These are cool. These are. This is like my favorite one. <laughs> so that's another one of those um, uh, Kara special Karas like uh, the Honda and then it also has a red focus crumple and then I have it's, it counts as an AT or level 1 focus so I have a little bit of time to juggle something that has struggle potential which EX taught to <laughs> you can cancel breathless so I did focus crumple this one's really neat focus Focus, focus, ultra. That motion was a little jank. That's such a cool combo. That Makoto combo is lit. Oh, yeah. This is the beta. Remember this shit? Anyone remember? Anyone remember the beta? I forgot there were any Street Fighter 5 versions of this. That's not even optimal. <laughs> That's the whole playlist. Sad. Alright, where were we? Those were fun. Those were really fun ideas. Unfortunately, there was like no... There's no way to do them really in Street Fighter 5. I mean, there are, but they're all really situational. Street Fighter 4 had a lot of like useless stuff that was kind of cool looking. I remember playing Chun-Li in, in the beta and thinking this character's going to be really nuts. And then she ended up being number one.
If Street Fighter Five Block and Medium Kick did that, it would be really strong. I don't think it'd be busted, but it'd be really nuts. It would be like very, very good. Something about the match flow in this game is still better than Street Fighter V. Most quality of life stuff is worse. I think this matchup isn't great either. Jory actually has a pretty decent capacity to zone in this game. And that shines against characters who are very weak for zoning. Like T-Hawk. Very, very difficult time approaching this. Look at the corner push. It's normally, if you're playing defensive, you normally lose screen positioning. But this this jury is actually, and like how well you play defensive is how, how fast you're losing it. Because if you're playing defensive really badly, you'll lose it really quick. But this jury is actually gaining screen position. Uh, no juggle. I think he had one. I didn't go for it. Oh. That's a little tricky. Hard to get out of. Meaty sweep is such a shitty situation for T-Hawk. His sweep is kind of unsafe. It's like minus nine or something. Tenta Cruelty specifically here because he heard Street Fighter 4 was being streamed. Long time no see. Oh, you don't see that very often. That was a nice place to sneak in a reset. That was actually really well done. Where do you get the juggle into staying fierce? I forget. Is that after a hard pinwheel? Is that after an EX pinwheel? Jerry has some combos where she like knocks the opponent over and then she can juggle a stand fierce if she's in VT1. Ah! Ultra 1. Uh, it depends for T-Hawk. T-Hawk's light command grab leaves him very close. His heavy command grab leaves him really far. So there's a, like, uh, most T-Hawks, even in, like, situations, even in, like, big punish situations where they can use any version of command grab, they often use the light one. Just to keep the Oki. Against Shotos, um, light command grab into neutral jump into uh, well-timed dive is a cross-up. It's very easy to do. It's kind of cute. Yeah, I think that's the big thing that's missing from Street Fighter V still. Is that there's a decent match from mid-screen and beyond. Whereas in Street Fighter V, that kind of doesn't happen. I like the up-close neutral, to be honest. Of Street Fighter V. But the far away neutral is very shit. God, someone already just asked that. We had 40. We had like 50. We had literally like 50 Street Fighter 4 bath cups. I agree that a general fireball buff would be extremely good. Ultra 2 Chun-Li, this would be over. I like the way the half ultra and full ultra works. I'd actually like that a lot in Street Fighter V. Imagine if every trigger was either a... Imagine if every trigger was a 3-bar trigger, but 2-bar triggers gave you a shorter time, and then 3-bar... Like, if you did it, you could activate it 2 bars, or you could activate it 3 bars. I'm already in the Street Fighter 4 Revival Discord. 
I think. Pretty sure I am. Yes, that's all true. Um, so 30th anniversary comes out, and I think it includes like a download code for Street Fighter 4 or something on PS4, right? But Street Fighter 4 on PS4 is already out. You can just go out and buy it. It's not going to be a new game with with uh, 30th anniversary or anything. It's going to be the same version of the game too. I actually like Ultra 2 in this matchup. I don't know. So they can probably go either way. Uh, Street Fighter 4 Fireball is the goal they should shoot for. That's the right strength of Fireball in my opinion. You could have Street Fighter 2 Fireballs in a game with like parry. If you could parry Fireballs then it would be okay to have Street Fighter 2 style Fireballs. The problem with Street Fighter 3 is that they made Fireballs worse and then also made a universal way of dealing with them. Uh, four new KF characters are super fucking cool. I like how they kind of don't play by the rules for the max mode combos. Blue Mary is one of my favorite bitches. I didn't even know she was part of the pack. Blue Mary is my actual my actual hoe. A2 fireballs are weak, so are A3. They're better than Street Fighter 3, but worse than Street Fighter 4. Ulta got, if you could parry his one of his fireballs and then instantly jump forward, it would like give you a jump in punish on his next fireball. Shermie is also my wife. But I don't like her gameplay as much, whereas I love Blue Mary's gameplay. Anyway, after you block an Ulta got fireball, if you hold up forward, then he anti airs you after still throwing a fireball. That all comboed. Quesadilla okay, Mom is like the most buffed move in the lifespan of this game. Not really, but it's up there. That was minus. The throw attack was a little risky for um, Ryu. Ooh, nice. One thing I like about Street Fighter V is the red health shows you where the combos drop. Hydran has some really neat stuff with the on block with the, the EX move that leaves the hitbox inside you, the projectile. It also is really good on hit. It's very fancy. I know you can like guard cancel roll out. But if you don't have a guard cancel roll, you can do some really silly stuff with that. I don't remember what Evil Ryu towards medium kick is on counter hit. Oh, drop the combo. Bad punish! Counter hit key bomb into another key bomb. It just melts Seth's health instantly in two hits. Or like counter hit key bomb into a, a EX leg throw. That DP would have caught a forward dash, release, or back dash. Very safe option to go for there. I actually haven't seen gameplay footage of Blast Blue Cross Tag Battle yet. Is it 2v2? Or something? But the name like Cross Tag Battle, it seems like it would be 2v2. TV2. I know it's like a um, crossover game with fucking BlazBlue and what is it? BlazBlue, Persona 4, and Ruby or something like that? How'd Ruby make it? Unist. Yeah.
I might fuck around with that game when it comes out. I want like a new Blast Blue, but I can't be a like a remake of an existing Blast Blue. <laughs> This poison turtling is kind of good. Oh, maybe I'm not there. I thought I was. Oh, I might I might just not be Befail in that. Befail is my... It's my name in the Befail Discord. But it's not my name in the general sense of Discord. Since I'm another person with other interests that aren't just fighting games. And I don't like being Befail everywhere. Some discords let you change your name and some don't. Oh, EX Tatsu would have been good there. That was like a little choke. That should not have been Light Tatsu into EXDP. That should have been EX Tatsu into Ultra 2. I would have won that round if it was me. Kid of Juggle there. Ain't here, um... I don't remember if it's a free juggle state if they land on a fireball, but even if it's not a free juggle state, you can just juggle into Poison's Rekka. And it's pretty fast. EX Fireball from Poison is so fucking good. Got the link? I think so. And then he got low jab stain fierce. That's actually really damaging. Very cool. That's a bunch of one frame. No. Flip kick into low jab is two frame, and then low jab into stain fierce is one frame. That was it. It's it's stain short is one more plus frame than stain jab. So if you do stain short, you can do low fierce, which does ten more damage than um. Uh, Stain Fierce, I think. Technically, Poison's strongest cancel is Stern Roundhouse, which you can't link into. That does 110. It's two hits, and you can cancel the second hit. But of course, scaling applies by actions, not hits. Crouch Fierce is, I think, 100 damage. Drop the link. So Stain Short into Low Fierce is also good. DP Ender? Wreck Ender. That's the best Oki, I think. DP Ender does more damage. Back throw. Doesn't really need the screen position anymore. That was a guaranteed kill, maybe. Chun Li couldn't backdash out of that, I don't think. That meaty fireball. EX Bird Kick, Poison would have been able to block. And then once the fireball was blocked, uh, she had a two block string to kill. And there's no escape from a two block string in this game. Checkmate scenarios in this game. There are certain knockdowns you can get where you just got a guaranteed win if you do the right thing. Poison has a lot of them. That was a checkmate scenario. Once he got the back throw, he already won. Ooh. Checkmate scenarios in Street Fighter V require the opponent to have no V reversal available, either because they're in trigger or because they have no V meter. And they also require you to have super. There's a couple of raw super checkmate scenarios too. Super is activated very close where the opponent can't get out of the way and can't invincibility their way through it. Like if it's a Vega against like an Abigail and the Abigail, the Vega has no health and the Abigail does like just raw super. The Vega can't backdash out of the way, he can't jump out of the way and he has no invincibility to use. They're still around in Street Fighter V, but they're much more rare. I'm 
Dan is... There's no matchup where Dan is the best character against anyone. And the characters that Dan is most similar to um, have better matchups than him. So Dan is not really a counterpick character. He's not worthless. He's probably not the worst character in the game. But he is like a basically a joke pick. He does have a little bit of a weapon in that most people don't really know the matchup. Bottom 5 of Ultra Dan is almost certainly there. Hakan might be there, it depends on who you ask. Some people say that Hakan is mid or even high tier, some people say he's trash. Hakan has some matchups where he's a counter pick, so he's not worthless. DJ is a serious contender for bottom five. Blanca is a serious contender for bottom five. Um, let me think. Honda, maybe? Is a contender for bottom five. There's probably some more. If I thought about it for a while, I could probably get some. Dan was like never strong. Ultra Dan is probably the strongest Dan's ever been. Sim is Sim has hard counter picks in Ultra, but he's okay besides that. Sim usually has five fives. And he's actually got a couple matchups where he's pretty good. But then certain characters just end him. And they're often good characters. Like Seth beats Sim pretty bad, I think. Uh, both twins beat Sim pretty bad. Um, Hakan is actually a character who beats Sim pretty bad, so I've heard. Um, I think Helena is bad for Sim. Although, to be honest, I don't really think I played that many Sims. When I was Helena ending up. Hugo is like secret okay tier, but he has bad counter picks too. Hugo suffered a lot versus, I think, Guile. He suffered a lot versus Sim. He suffered a lot through. Uh, Cody is weird. Cody has really good strengths and really bad weaknesses. Yeah, Kami and DiCaprio are both pretty bad for Sim. I don't know about Destroy, but it's shitty. Probably 7-3. That's kind of Destroy. Kami, Sim might be not that bad. It might be like 6.5, 3.5. DiCaprio, Sim is probably legitimately 7-3. Oh yeah, Goku beats Hugo. <laughs> a little fireball. It's actually not a bad fireball, but it's bad as a fireball. As a pressure tool, it's okay. It's quite plus for a fireball. It has very little recovery. But it's not even very good at dispelling other fireballs. T Hawk is yeah, bottom bottom three probably. I would agree with that. T Hawk is like bottom two. Evil Ryu, Yun, and uh, Elena. Not in that order. Evil Evil Ryu, Elena, Yun are my personal top three. But I would accept if someone said Evil Ryu, Yun, Elena, and I would also accept if someone said Elena, Evil Ryu, Yun. Those are both also acceptable answers. Um, and if someone threw DiCaprio in there, I wouldn't disagree. Neat. Nice. Max range drill and DX drill. If that was blocked, uh, the rose player lost. Dan has a lot of quirks they never really bothered to fix. Like hitbox wonkiness and stuff. He has certain attacks where they tried really hard to make the moves good. And then certain attacks where they literally didn't give a fuck at all. Like if you look at his down towards roundhouse or whatever that normal is. Back roundhouse? I don't actually remember the input. Close roundhouse. They changed it to a motion. But I don't remember what the motion is. If you look at like close strong. Those are actually like good normals. If you look at his fireball corner combos, if you look at his EX, like, or lights, Dan kick. Uh, any DP you can do, dash in into neutral jump, hard punch, or medium punch. Hard punch is a knockdown, medium punch is a reset. Hard punch does a little bit more damage. He can also do a hard Dan kick, but it only gets the last hit. 
All the things... Okay, the trick with Dan. This is the joke with Dan that a lot of people don't get. Well, obviously, they get that he's supposed to be bad. Okay, that's 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 the very easy-to-see joke with Dan. But the thing about Dan is that a lot of the normals that are good on Shoto's are horrible on Dan. Like, deliberately bad normals. Like, low-medium kick is really shitty. But it looks like shoto low-medium kick. So you have, like, an impression that it should be a pretty good normal. But it goes nowhere near as far as it's supposed to. The startup is worse than, like, shoto low-forward. Um, cancels, like, don't usually work after it. Like, it doesn't have that much hits done. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that. Or, like, uh, Crouch Fierce. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit low strong. Uh, close Fierce. Dan has a lot of normals where, on Shotos, they look like the Shoto normals, but then you try them and they're shit. Um, but then he has other normals that the Shotos don't use that are actually okay. Like, Shotos don't really use Close Strong that much. Shotos don't use Close Renos that much. And Dan actually has a lot of damage off of those things. If you try and use Dan's attacks like Shoto attacks, you will, like, get fucked up. That's the joke, I guess. Ooh. Tried to hit Reflect, I think. If you try and use Dan's Fireball like a Fireball, it's useless. If you try and use it like something else, it's actually okay. If you try and use Dan's Dan Kick or his Uppercut like a Shoto Uppercut, it's useless. You can post links. Dan is intended to trap people who think that he's a Shoto. If you try and play Dan like a Shoto, you get fucked. But he's not a terrible character, you just can't play him like a Shoto. All of the things he has that look like Shoto tools are actually terrible. And all the things he has that aren't like Shoto tools are okay. That's the gag. That was a cool series of links. Far stand short is not something Shoto's really used that much in this game. But Dane's far stand short is actually kind of good. It's like a spacer tool and stuff. Dan can do close strong and then link a DP, I think. He can do close strong and link a background house. This is a moderately shitty matchup. I don't know. Nice little confirm. You've got very limited confirms there as T-Hawk. Oh. What an odd punish. And that actually linked. Towards hard kick into far fierce. So far fierce is, I think, um, four frame startup or five. I don't remember which. It's a one frame link from towards my house, which I guess would make it four, right? I don't know. That was actually a really weird link to go for. Whoa. Is that focus forward dash? Nice. Oh my god, very nice. That's a hard combo to do. That's actually a little harder than forward dash ultra 2 in my experience. I think you can still do forward dash there and it still works. Good lord. That might have just chipped out. That might have not been a giant guess. That has two hits of chip. The chip on EX flash kick is actually kind of good. No. Oh. That was a good punish. <laughs> Early jump fierce to circumvent the jump in the anti tier mix up. Um, Gal has to deal with a mix-up whenever T-Hawk jumps in. It's not a great mix-up. Flash Kick beats both options. But uh, Crouch Fierce, it's a 50-50. Crouch Fierce gets beaten by Dive. But if it's timed late, it'll beat Dive. But if it's timed late, then he'll block a jump in. Like a regular jump. Oh! He was expecting to be blocked, so I did have a reset. This is a good T-Hawk. Doing some advanced stuff. This is a good Gal too. T-Hawk's anti airs are okay as of Ultra. The XDP was always pretty good. Regular DP is okay now too. T-Hawk used to have kind of shrug anti airs, but now they're alright. Nice, that might have been a punish. If you get grabbed in your landing frames, you can't jump out. There's like two frames where I grab as a punish on a jump. If you didn't hit in air normal. I want Dan to get that special move back where he breaks his arm hitting you. I forget what game that was in. It might have been SVC or something. Or like Marvel 2. Dan had an attack in one game where he broke his he punches you so hard he breaks his wrist. Or he like breaks his arm. Oh, 
having Dan take damage by hitting you with actual good attacks would be pretty funny. Like he had attacks that took on white damage, but they were actually like good. There actually isn't a character who does that yet, is there? There's no one who can inflict white damage on themselves. That'd be kind of cool, don't you think? That all links. Far jab into low medium kick is a one frame, I think. Raging Demon again. Yeah, Otokamichi. It's hard punch. Hard punch, light kick, back. Light punch, light punch. Yeah, Geef has a lot of that with like the parry and the same hard punch. But that's the closest. That's how Stim medium kick is so immune. And then he cancelled it instantly into the light fireball. So we had a combo out of it on hit and it also beat throws. Nisha jump, medium kick. Interesting normal. Yeah, Kyrie had that. Kyrie had attacks that damage him. My attacks! They hurt me. Maybe I'll just cut myself. Was that the line? I think so. The pain to Akuma on the ceiling. Whoa, that juggled. I didn't realize she had that. Close EX high fireball into low fireball as a juggle. That's actually really cool. Nice juggle. Ken, your pants. You can't keep showing up like this, and the phone calls need to stop. Ironically, T-Hawk in this game is quite a bit like he is in Street Fighter 2. I shouldn't say ironically, because that's what they were shooting for. He's generally very shit, but if he starts getting some momentum going, he can actually do some nice stuff. Look at that. Stand short, uh, low strong. He, unfortunately, I think the only ender there is an EX stand kick. The third strike bar is the best, best fucking one. I swear to God, 12, if you don't cut that out right now, I'm going to stick you in a jar and shove you up my own ass. Something like that. This is an interesting match. I haven't seen something like this in a while. That link is so cool. That throw whiff animation is actually the same as it was in Alpha. It looks very silly. He loses his balance whiff in the throw. There's some subtleties to the throw whiff animations that I think are kind of neat. One thing that pisses me off, Elena's all kicks, right? That's her gimmick, visually, is that all of her attacks are kicks. Um, in third strike, Elena grabs you with her foot as her throw whiff animation. She like wraps her leg around your leg. And then, like, trips you up and then tosses you over her head with her leg. What was I saying? I got distracted. Oh, um... Now, in Street Fighter 4, she throws with her hand instead of her foot. They changed her throw with animation. Made me sad. Um, Jury throws with her foot in this game. That was nice. That a lot.
Dan as a record character would actually be really cool. Dudley. I think this matchup is not great. The thing is, Dudley is one of the best characters in this whole game at ignoring fireballs with that ducking. But Poison Fireballs recover really quickly, and she can hit you, like, while you're trying to go through her Fireballs. I think she can just, like... And the Fireball stayed there for a little while. I think once Dudley does a ducking follow-up, he stops being throw immune. Wow. Well, well. Most conventional fireball answers don't work against Poison's hard fireball. Yeah, I was about to say that. Heavy fireball kind of breaks all the rules of the game. Not really in a truly bad way. I can tell you Elena can't slide under it. Elena also can't slide under Chun-Li fireball's memory serves. And when you take away slide as a fireball answer, Elena's answers to fireballs are extremely shit. She's got um, EX, EX Rhino Horn as a preemptive uh, answer to fireballs, which is very, very bad. And I feel like there might be one more, but I don't remember what it is. Focus them in Ultra, Ultra 2, and then outstall them, which is what most Elena players did. Oh, super goes through fireballs. Ultra 1 as well. Uh, Ultra 1 can trade with Poison's fireball, so... Like, if you Ultra 1 through a Poison fireball, you'll hit Poison, and then you'll eat the fireball, and then your Ultra won't play out. Super works if memory serves, but you won't have super very often. And uh, EX Rhino Horn is unsafe, doesn't do that much damage from a far connect, and also requires you to do it preemptively, and it costs a bar. So it's about as bad as it can get for a fireball answer. Um, so you're really relying on slide, which makes uh, Chun-Li and Poison very, very slow stalling matchups for uh, Elena, which is why everyone hated the um, uh, Infiltration versus Gamer B. In terms of the absolute best fireball of those, it might be Goken, it might be Guile. No, it's Poison. Poison beats all of them. Poison's fireballs are nuts. Poison has like a built-in mix-up with their fireballs. A better one than Goken anyway. This might just chip out. That was good avoiding. This is so shit. There's nothing There's nothing good to do here. Yeah. He was like dead. Goken technically doesn't lose any fireball wars. But, you know, there's more to a fireball being good than that. They're all good at different shit. Poison's is probably the best, in my humble opinion. Sagat's of those is probably the worst. Sagat has really bad frames on his fireballs, but they're still really good. Does EX Q-Bomb even go through fireballs? I think it has some invincibility, right? There should have been a juggle to DP there. He didn't go for it. That did a lot. A very, very short sequence that just melted HP there. Because he had the white health from the EX run. Fireballs that disappear are already kind of annoying for Minot to deal with. Um, fireballs have much worse frames in Street Fighter V. There's more recovery on them. That's the main thing. There are fireballs that Ryu could throw in Street Fighter 4, where if the opponent jumped forward, Ryu would be able to uppercut them out of the air. But in Street Fighter 5, they punish the fireball. And there's also no FADC, so there's no good conversions from fireballs. There's a few other factors, too. They're a bit slower, by and large.
The only good fireball still in Street Fighter V, Grounded Fireball. Oh, no, I the only one. There's a lot that are still really good because of the reward. Akuma Ground Fireball is very nice when you consider a V-Trigger cancel. Same with Ken's, I suppose. But Akuma's is a little bit more easy to land than Ken's. Akuma has longer sequences into his fireball that still lead to Ultra. I mean, VT1 stuff. Um, the only fireball that's still like a Street Fighter 4 fireball is like VT1 Ryu. Falka has like a gun style fireball. It looks really fast. Gauss Fireball is still good. What am I talking about? It still has decent recovery. Gauss Fireball in Street Fighter in this game, Gauss Fireball has almost no recovery, and he can like if you jump on reaction to it, he can just anti air you every time easily. In Street Fighter Five, Guile has a Street Fighter Four Fireball. Um, Falka's trailer dropped today. Go watch it. It's out. Literally, go look at it. She holds her fucking stick like a gun and shoots uh. Like a rifle and shoots uh, psycho power out of it. Is her fireball actually tap? Is it tap tap or is it like uh, Kunai Kinage? Whoa. I think that was supposed to be an EX fireball, but he already had a fireball on the screen. Oh, maybe he was trying to EX DP uh, EX Spire or something. That was a punish. That was a really nice punish. He could have just got same medium kick, but he actually spotted the range and did walk in low fuse. Kind of clean. So that's a bit like Kunai Kinaga. I'm doing pretty well with the uh, character cups. I hope I can win Falcas. Jump strong. Yeah, Poison's DPF ADC is very strange. Her DP in general is very strange. I have a very basic idea of how attacking mix-ups work. I don't play the game, though. Highs are really fast, but you can duck them. Oh, shit. The video ended. Mids are overheads, and they're very rewarding and usually safe. Um, but they're not as fast as highs. And then lows can be parried. And lows are either unsafe or reactable. But usually not both. So if it's a low and it's fast, but you block it, you can punish it. And if it's a low, it's and it's slow. It's usually safe, but if it's a low and it's slow, you can reaction low parry it. I'm pretty sure that's the general idea. And then lows can only be blocked low, and um, mids can only be blocked high. There, taking mix-ups in a nutshell. I think there's a good amount of risk reward too. Attacks that launch are usually unsafe, but launches, of course, lead to really high damage. And the launches that are safe are very, very slow, I think. Generally how it all works. I don't want to watch all this. I'm just going to put this on really fast while I take a piss. And then I'm going to go do something else. But it might be fully uninteresting. <laughs> はい、じゃあ、じゃんけんをして、え、ドアピンスピーだけで成功なんとなく同時出しで、お願いします。さあ、現在見てまいりましょう。さあ、ワンピンが、え、アーティシティ、え、桜、そしてチョップダンスチー
コードだ広瀬誘いさあ先ほど PB2 万5千円が限定大会の方ですね、えー、さあ優勝の広瀬誘いさあそして隣は博士では対優勝というからやろうかと思The only Street Fighter, I mean, the only the only fighting game characters I can think of who have guns with bullets are Shion from Melty Blood and、uh, Sharon from Street Fighter X. There's probably more, but those are the only two I can think of. Oh, you know, there's um. There's Chris with the rifle. I mean, not the rifle, the Magnum. And there's also,、um, technically speaking,、uh, Sonya Blade with the grenades. The demolition Sonya Blade. It's kind of like that. <laughs> 